At a distance of only 4.2 light years, Proxima b is the closest exoplanet to Earth. And let's be honest, what's 4.2 light years? Well, after all, 37.8 trillion kilometers, and thus a distance that currently seems simply insurmountable for us. Because even the fastest probes of our time would take several millennia to reach the planetary system around Proxima Centauri. But does this also mean that exoplanets like Proxima b will forever remain out of our reach? Well, not necessarily. In fact, experts are already working hard to turn the dream of interstellar travel into reality. The corresponding concepts are both groundbreaking and unorthodox. But how likely is it that the leap to the stars can be mastered in just a few decades in the future? And above all, how could the greatest milestone in space travel be achieved by the smallest probe of all time? It was in 1992 that the first exoplanets were added to the star charts with the planetary companions of the pulsar Lich. But now, more than 30 years after the official first discovery, the list of our extrasolar neighboring worlds is a little longer. In fact, we now know of more than 6,900 planets orbiting stars other than the Sun. But that's not all. Some of these alien celestial bodies are then also under the exciting suspicion of being potentially habitable, and possibly even of having already produced extraterrestrial life forms. And this also applies to our immediate cosmic neighborhood. Just take a look at Tea Garden B, which is 12 light years away and tops the list of potentially habitable exoplanets. And on the Earth Similarity Index, ESI for short, it achieves a remarkable value of 0.95. The ESI indicates the extent to which an exoplanet resembles Earth in terms of energy flow, mass, and radius. But be careful. Although Tea Garden B lies in the habitable zone of its home system, which allows for the existence of water in a permanently liquid form, we don't know at this point whether it is truly habitable, or perhaps even already inhabited. As is well known, official confirmation of extraterrestrial life is still a long time coming, and our immediate exoplanetary neighbor Proxima b is no exception. At a distance of 4.2 light years, Proxima b ranks 8th on the promising habitability list with an ESI value of 0.86. But at the same time, it also has a locked rotation and, in Proxima Centauri, a parent star that has made astronomical headlines in the past with extreme radiation bursts. And while the question of life remains unanswered in this case as well, one thing is undisputed. If we really do try to make interstellar journeys one day, there is no more obvious destination than the Proxima Centauri system. But it's also true that what seems so obvious on paper sometimes seems out of reach in reality. Although the two Voyager probes have been known to be flying through space for almost 50 years and have even passed the boundaries of our home system, they have not yet even traveled a single light day from the Sun. Strictly speaking, the identical twin probes would have to fly for another 70,000 years before they would have covered the required distance of 4.2 light years. And if you rightly think that the ancient probes from the 70s are now getting a bit long in the tooth, then let it be said that even a probe with today's plasma and ion drives would need an estimated 40,000 years to arrive in the star system of desire. This microchip spaceship is supposed to reach Proxima b in just 20 years. Despite all this, and this is the surprising thing, Many experts are firmly convinced that the era of interstellar travel is inevitable. However, it's in the nature of things that where our current propulsion systems offer no prospect of success, new paths must be taken to realize the leap to other worlds. The fact that these new paths are not always that new, on the one hand, and on the other hand seem quite unconventional, is demonstrated by the core of the Breakthrough Starshot Research and Development Project, Launched in 2016 with the participation of astronomical greats such as Stephen Hawking and Freeman Dyson, this endeavor is based on a spaceship that is equipped with light sails and accelerated by a very strong laser, and thus on an idea that Robert Forward had already proposed in the 1970s. However, 
since a flight to Proxima b would be very different from the trips of our research probes into the solar system, the corresponding spaceship would consequently also have to be adapted to the special requirements of interstellar travel. In other words, this means nothing more than that the experts have to create an extremely tiny one. To reach the required speed of 60,000 kilometers per second and to be able to withstand the acceleration of several 10,000 g, a probe the size of a microchip would be needed. Together with a 4 by 4 meter light sail, this would only weigh a few grams. But then there is also the problem with the laser. To be precise, we would need not just one, but a whole series of powerful lasers that combine to form a 100 gigawatt beam and accelerate the mini probe's sail at a distance of 20 million kilometers. But if the dwarf probe is accelerated in this way and brought up to 20% of the speed of light in a very short time, it could then continue flying unchecked and reach Proxima Centauri in just 20 years. However, this will only work if the spacecraft gets all of its acceleration at launch. And this is where it gets complicated. First of all, a kilometer-long laser array would require the energy of several power plants at once. Furthermore, the focused laser beam would then also have to pass through the atmosphere, and we don't know what effects this would have. The Sun as a Light Station Fortunately, there is also a more economical approach in this regard. The probe could actually fly past the Sun on its way to Proxima Centauri to recharge its batteries with light and thus gain new momentum. To do this, it would have to approach our Sun to within about five solar radii. And at the same time, however, it would also have to be equipped with a significantly larger light sail. Since the Sun's natural power would not be able to keep up with the extreme intensity of the laser beams, a light sail of about 100,000 square meters would be needed in this case. Galileo fans know that this corresponds to the area of 14 soccer fields. But the appropriate material provided, the sailing Colossus could still be launched into orbit unscathed. And it may be that the key to the material success is called graphene, a very light, ultra-thin layer of carbon atoms bonded with a honeycomb pattern. Despite this, graphene is considered an extremely stable material that could successfully withstand the adverse conditions of space. But as we know, the sail and the flight alone are not enough. After all, the probe would also have to decelerate somehow when it arrives at Proxima Centauri and its companion stars Alpha Centauri A and B. To do this, the scientists have calculated that the spacecraft would have to slow down to a maximum of 4.6% of the speed of light, or 13,800 kilometers per second, in order to swing into the system. Lo and behold, the interstellar pioneer could also use the help of the stars for this endeavor. According to this, the probe could swing its sail at a distance of about five stellar radii in such a way that it's decelerated by the light of the stars ahead. However, the travel time in this scenario would also increase fivefold. Since such a braking maneuver takes a very long time, the interstellar first flight would no longer take 20, but almost 100 years. But the wait could be worth it. After all, the simulations and calculations have shown that it would also be possible to visit the planet Proxima b this way. To do that, the light sail would have to be aligned so that the light from Alpha Centauri A slows the probe and deflects it in the direction of Alpha Centauri b. There, the probe would be decelerated again and finally catapulted in the direction of Proxima Centauri. However, a small caveat here would be the fact that these swing-by maneuvers take up more time and would increase the total duration to 140 years. But in return, it would enable us to study an exoplanet up close for the first time. This way, we could directly verify whether Proxima b really lives up to its reputation as the cosmic twin of Earth. And who knows, if the people in charge of Breakthrough Starshot ultimately decide to go with the laser option after all, and then also find ways and means to implement it, the journey to new star worlds could possibly become a reality sooner than we thought. But there is still a long way to go before we get there. The researchers estimate that the development time alone would be 20 years. Furthermore, the implementation of the project would require an effort comparable to that of the largest international research projects to date. 
such as that which preceded the construction of the CERN Nuclear Research Center. So what can we conclude? Well, on the one hand, Breakthrough Starshot does not yet go beyond the status of an ambitious idea. But on the other hand, and this is the fascinating thing, it is at least theoretically possible to master the challenges of interstellar travel and to make us a species that sends its research probes to distant star systems. And we'd now like to turn you into a species that presses the like and subscribe buttons. We'd love for you to join our community and never miss a new video again. We'll see you soon.